Hi friends, Simit here from InformTrades.com. In today's video, we're going to discuss yield to maturity, a calculation that helps bond investors compare bonds of various durations, yields, and prices. Let's get started. Okay, key points. We'll start by defining yield to maturity and yield to call. We'll take a look at some example calculations and calculators, and then we'll see how all this information can be applied by using a yield to maturity screener and a bond screener. Okay. Why and how to calculate yield maturity, what yield maturity basically yield to maturity basically is. It lets you compare the bonds of different durations and prices. So let's say you have a bond that matures in 15 years and is yielding 4% and is priced at $800 with a par of uh, $1,000 versus a bond with a completely different set of metrics. You know, yield 7%, matures in 20 years, face value of 1000 price of 900 It lets you compare those two different bonds, different maturity, different price, different yield, to get to a simple point. How can you compare those different bonds and get to the same point? Okay, the calculation that's employed to allow you to compare those different bonds is you take the coupon payments of the bond, right? So if you have a bond that's paying you uh, $100 a year over 10 years, you add up all those coupon payments, so $100 over 10 years, that'd be $1,000. And let's say the face value of that bond was also $1,000, meaning at one point, this is a great bond we're talking about here, but <laughs> let's say the initial bond you, uh, you lent was for $1,000, so you're going to get that back, $1,000. So you add the principal repayment that happens at the end of maturity when the bond matures, and you divide that, the sum of the coupon payments with the principal repayment, by the bond price. Now remember, this calculation isn't so useful if you are buying the bond first time, if you are buying it directly from the company or government that's issuing the bond. However, if you're buying it secondhand, then the bond price and the par value may be two completely different numbers, meaning you may pay $400 for the bond, and when the principal, uh, when the market, when the principal comes, you know, when the bond matures and it's time for the repayment, it may only provide you with $350, or it may provide you with $550, depending on what's going on in the market, what time you bought it at, things like that. So this helps really when you're buying bonds secondhand from other investors, and the bond market, as we've discussed, is huge. It's um, you know much bigger than the stock market. So the bond aftermarket in terms of investors and traders buying bonds and selling bonds to each other uh, is a pretty substantial market. And there's lots of opportunities there, and some investors will focus entirely on that and say that's much better than stocks or, or other markets, uh, even if it doesn't get as much attention. Okay, so that's the basic calculation. There are a couple issues that need to be understood. Um, you know, in a lot of academic literature, they'll say a yield to maturity calculation should factor in reinvestment of coupon rates and should assume that the coupon uh, payments will be reinvested at the yield to maturity rate. So, for instance, if a bond matures in 15 years and you're getting annual coupon payments of $100, well, that first year when you get that annual coupon payment of $100, what are you doing with it? Are you reinvesting it and are you getting additional yield uh, as a result? If so, that should be factored into the yield of maturity calculations of that bond. Now, most calculators that you'll find online, and we'll get to calculators in a second, uh, don't factor in uh, reinvestment. So that's something to bear in mind when you're looking at calculators and screeners. One, you may want to see the fine print behind the calculators and screeners, whether or not they do, but chances are they don't because that makes calculation a lot more uh, complex. Uh, you may also wish to discount future cash flows. You know, if you're getting your principal repayment in uh, 10 years uh, versus 100 years or 30 years or whatever, um, you know, it, that principal repayment isn't always being discounted. So that's something you want to think about. You know, $1,000 20 years from now is very different than $1,000 10 years from now. And the coupon repayments that you, repayments that you get over time are meant to sort of uh, calibrate for that. But you may want to add in additional factors uh, based on exchange rate volatility or what have you. Most screeners and calculators will not do that for you. It will not provide you with the option to customize and toss in your own uh, discount rates and things like that. But that's something if you want to get into more advanced strategies that you may want to consider. Okay, so here let's take a look at a simple yield maturity calculator. And a lot of this, using a calculator in my experience, was uh, made it real easy for me to understand what's going on here. 
So par value, let, let's just put in some numbers here so we can, and we'll talk through what each number means. Par value is what you're getting back when the bond matures. So let's say the initial bond holder uh, lent the government $1,000, and so that's the face value of the bond, that when it matures, it will come back in $1,000. Market value, this is an investopedia.com calculator. Market value is the price of that bond at the moment. So let's say the price was $950, meaning even though the par is $1,000, a year into it, for whatever reason, a change in interest rates or what have you, uh, the market value of that bond fell to $950, and an investor was able to buy it at, at $950 from another investor. Annual rate. This is the yield on the bond. Let's say it's yielding 5%. Remember, this annual rate means 5% of $1,000, right? Because that was the initial face value of the bond. And let's say the bond matures in 12 years. Okay. So now we calculate, and we have the yield maturity is 5.58%. Now, just to illustrate, if I had the market value at 1000 Now we're at even 5%. So if your market value is equal to your par value, which is going to be the case when a bond is first issued, it's going to be the annual, the yield of maturity is going to be the same as the annual rate. So as an example, we can change this to 25. It's still 5%. We can change it to 250. It's still 5%. We can change both of these. Oh, these numbers. Still 5%. Okay, and if we meanwhile if we change this here, then it'll become three percent yield maturity three percent. So when par value equals market value, the yield maturity is basically going to be the annual coupon rate. Now, when the market value is different than the par value, that's when the calculations get all, all out of whack. So let's say, as an example, one hundred. Let's say par value of excuse me a thousand, and the market value is ten fifty, right? And the annual rate is five percent, and it matures in <laughs> well. Let's say 25 years. Okay, so now the yield maturity is 4.66%. Even though the annual rate is 5%, the market value I had to pay an extra above what the face value is at redemption. And now this is where the coupon rates actually make a difference. So if we change the maturity to 20 uh, years, the yield maturity declines a little bit. If we change it to 30 years, it goes up. Now, we, the idea here, or what's causing yield maturity to rise as the maturity in years expands, is that I'm getting more and more coupon rates. So more and more coupon rates, I add that to the market value and then divide that by uh, par value, or excuse me, add that to the par value and divide it by market value. Uh, that gives me more time to accrue yield, basically, when the maturity is further out. If the fact that if the maturity is shorter, Right, then the difference between the par value and market value becomes more significant. And that's the basic concept here. Um, so hopefully this sort of illustrated how a yield of maturity works. And if you have different bonds, you can sort of compare. You know, if you have a bond that's par value 1,000, market value is 1050, annual rate is you know, 7% and matures in 12 years, you know, 6.39. Now if the market value is 1100, 1150 par value is you know 1025 maturity is in 23 years annual rate of 6.5 okay so now we have we at least say that the previous bond with a shorter duration actually had the higher yield of maturity uh, so this is a way where you have bonds with radically different terms um, and you can sort of compare them, right? You can say the yield of maturity, all right, this bond is actually yielding more, and if it has a higher yield of maturity, it's more of an income investing strategy. Of course, there's lots of other things you want to consider, duration, your timeline, etc., but at least yield of maturity provides you with one measure that sort of allows you to compare bonds of different yields and maturities and prices. Okay, now we can take this information and apply it to a bond screener. This is a Yahoo Finance bond screener, and in case anyone knows of a better bond screener out there, I've looked for free bond screeners. I've looked for um, you know bond screeners that are premium. I haven't really found uh, one that's really robust. I see a lot of stock market screeners that have all sorts of functionality. Bond screeners don't have as much. Okay, so let's say I want to screen for bond. You can specify what types of bonds here. Um, you know, let's just say we want to select all types of bonds. I don't need to put out anything. Yield and maturity range. I want at least a minimum of seven percent. Um, and this, you know, coupon range, I'll leave the other fields blank. 
Uh, let's just say that's the main thing I want. I want to ultimately be making 7% a year, in which case yield maturity, that's what I'm looking at. Okay, find, uh, and this is the bonds that meet that yield of maturity. You can sort by that. You can sort by all of these other fields. You can see some bonds yield quite a bit. Um, now, one column I want to highlight here, and you can see the coupon rate too based on the current price. One uh, column I want to highlight here is whether the bond is callable. Okay, so if it's callable, you may recall in our previous video, that means the bond issuer can pay it off early, basically. They can call the bond, uh, pay it off early. That means you'll get the principal back early, but your coupon payments will discontinue. That means if it's callable, that's going to throw off the yield of maturity calculation, right? Because that means yield of maturity is based on full, the bond reaching its full maturity. If the bond is called prior to maturity, then the yield of maturity calculation is going to be thrown off. So a lot of investors will actually calculate yield to call, which is the yield to the first call date that is uh, coming up, uh, and compare that. Uh, there's also something called yield to worst, which looks at yield to call versus the yield to maturity and takes the lower number. Um, I haven't found, this is where I think there's some type of a void, or maybe it's out there and I just don't know about it, but I haven't found a good screener that allows me to, to screen for all these calculations. You screen for yield to call, yield to maturity, yield to worst. Um, you know, I think there's something to be, bond screeners need some improvement. <laughs> I just uh, printed that. Um, okay, and we're back here. You can say no, right? So if you're using a bond screener, you may want to filter out callable bonds for that reason. If you're very sensitive, if yield of maturity is very important to you, uh, and you really are using a screener, you may want to select no for callable bonds. Or if you don't care because the bond gets called, you get your principal back, you can reinvest it. Uh, that, anyway, that's something I think should be considered. And the, a lot of these points we haven't discussed yet in our videos, we will get to them shortly. That's about it. Any questions you have, anything you want to add, join us at informedtrades.com. Head over to informedtrades.com forward slash donate if you'd like to contribute to helping us make better videos. And of course, like this video, share it on Google+, Facebook, any other social network. We'd really appreciate it. Best of luck in your trading and investing, and we'll see you next time. Take care.